My name's Jason and uh, I'm sure you've watched so many uh, hope stories. Um, no doubt in my mind you've been um, amazed or even intrigued by the sorts of uh, videos that you've watched and the clips and the lives that have been changed and um, I watch them and they continue to stun me, they continue to um, change the way that I look at the goodness of God and um, the hope that is in Jesus Christ and I want to just take a few minutes of your time and talk to you about the most amazing story, the most amazing love that you will ever experience and can ever experience uh, in this life. Uh, my name's Jason and uh, eight years ago I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. Um, I had drugs in my life, alcohol, pornography, sleeping around. Um, I was a liar, I was a thief, dishonored my parents. I just did everything that was opposite to the way that I should be living. And not by um, the community standards or the world standards, but by the standard of God, the image that he'd created me to live in. Um, I'd lived sub, sub level, I'd lived completely inferior to that life that he called me to and so I want to quickly talk to you about that and I want to take you to the start of the Bible because if we don't see the way that we're created and we don't see the image that we're created in that we'll, then we'll never know um, who we're actually truly meant to be and you've probably heard the story many times you've seen funny memes about it you've seen all these yeah funny quotes and the world has been talking about this subject since um, humanity uh, even had the ability to write on paper, even had the ability to communicate. Um, and so I'm going to read to you out of the beginning of the scriptures. And um, it's going to, I'm going to tie it into the wonderful message of the gospel, because unless you understand this, then you'll never actually know what it is that um, you need to believe in. And so I want to start off with saying that um, if you listen to this today and you get given an opportunity, which you will, to surrender your life to Jesus, do not reject it. Do not walk away from this opportunity. Do not walk away from what God has put before us every single day. He showed us in creation. He showed us through the gospel story that stood the test of time, the biggest wars, the most literature, the most songs, the most, the biggest group of people on earth, 2.3 billion people believe in the gospel and they believe in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not something that you can wipe out of history. It's not something that you can stop. It's not something that you can even turn a blind eye to. It will find you every single place that you go. And so we're going to pick up in the beginning in the creation story because this is where it all begins for us and really um, where we can see the entire gospel play out in this moment where God creates Adam and Eve and he puts them in a garden. And so the scriptures literally say that God created man and woman, you and me, and he created them in his image, in his likeness. He made them to be compatible to walk with him. The most normal thing you and I can do as human beings is actually to walk with God. And he put them in a garden and it says that he would walk with them in the cool of the day, in the breeze, where what it's describing is that humans for the first time ever, the first created beings were actually walking with God by his spirit. He had come to actually dwell with them and be with them. And the Bible says when he created Adam and Eve, or when he created Adam, it says that he created him out of the dust of the earth, when nothing more than just dirt. Human beings are just fibers and cells and proteins that are being put together by the wonderful wisdom of God. And then it says, then he breathed in them and they became a living being. Friend, you might have been trying to look for life in drugs, looking for life in wealth, looking for life in pornography, looking for life in sex, looking for life in success, looking for life in all your achievements, looking for life in being a professional athlete, looking for life in being the best of the best, or even uh, taking a life of celibacy or taking a life of living off the land and being a completely natural person and even connecting with your own spirit and your own soul and living a, a life of new age um, spiritism. You might have tried to do all of those things, but you won't find life in those things. It's until God breathes himself, his breath into human beings that they finally become living. I want to tell you that 
You might be living in a body right now, but you're simply just existing. You've not experienced the life that comes when God actually comes in. I was literally just, I, I was a tomb. I was a grave. And I don't know if you've ever seen a coffin that they put dead people in, but coffins are done up beautifully. They're arrayed sometimes in silver and gold. They range from $3,000 to millions of dollars. They encrust them with diamonds, but inside is a dead person. Inside it houses a corpse. Inside there's, there's substance in there that is it's decaying, and that is what humanity is without the life and the presence of God living within them. And that was my life. That was true of me. And if you're sitting here and you've heard these hope stories and you know that they're sitting, um, they're sitting with you, they resonate with you, maybe you've had depression, maybe you've had anxiety, maybe you've been absolutely hopeless, maybe you've had relationships that have split up, maybe you did the wrong thing, maybe you cheated on a partner, maybe um, you entertained the wrong things and it got you down a road that you couldn't turn around, you couldn't find a U-turn and so you just kept going and going and going. Maybe your friends introduced you to substances and those substances got you wound up and you ended up being in your very own prison cell. I know what that's like. I know what it's like being a prisoner inside. I tried to take my life once upon a time. I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and you don't have any other desire but to get the substance that made you feel better the day before. I remember being a teenager and going to the fridge and I'd been buying cheap wine. I remember going, oh, surely I can get away with not drinking it at nine o'clock in the morning and it would bother me. It would bother me that within me was this thing that I couldn't shake and I couldn't break and it was like this very own barbed wire around my soul. And friends, you might think that this isn't a big deal, and I'm telling you, it's a big deal. The thing that I was feeling, that drawing I was feeling, that thing that was destroying my life, it wasn't just me, it wasn't just my desires, it was called sin. Sin is cancer. Sin is something that lives in the heart of every man that's not surrendered to Jesus Christ. It's like a cancer that lives inside. Have you ever thought about that? Cancer, it binds itself to its host and then slowly kills it from the inside until it and the host is dead. That's what sin is. Sin comes in and it it starts to mix. It's like leaven that goes into dough and eventually it becomes so overwhelming within the dough it causes it to rise. It's the same thing with your life and it's the same thing with my life. It was the same thing with my life. But thank God Jesus Christ came and he paid a penalty and died upon a cross and he gave us freedom. Freedom from what? It was freedom from the bondage of sin, the power, the pleasure, and and the dominion, that ruling master of sin over the life and souls of human beings. And Jesus, the Bible says that, that the wages of sin is actually death, and that came through Adam and Eve when they disobeyed God. When he put them in the garden, he breathed life into them. They disobeyed the command that he said. And it was simply, don't eat from the knowledge of tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A simple command. Now, we wonder why people get so many things wrong. We wonder why people make so many decisions that are bad and that are, that are evil, that, that, are, that are cursed. Why do they make these decisions? It's simply because hum- humans, separate from God, can't make decisions that are godly. They can't make decisions based on holiness. They can't make decisions that are going to benefit them and bring life and bring restoration. Adam and Eve are a representation of this. And you might be sitting there saying, I can't make the right decision either. Chaos follows me. Disturbance follows me. Destruction follows me everywhere I go. And I'm telling you, friend, it's because of sin. It makes people stupid. You make stupid decisions sometimes. I've made stupid decisions and I wondered why I was always in this position. It's because of sin. And Jesus came knowing the wages of sin is death, eternal separation and hell away from God. And he paid for it. The only atonement, the only payment that was worthy of it was a blood sacrifice. And Jesus came, he paid the price on the cross, he was broken, he was bruised. The Bible describes him as being marred beyond any of the sons of man. It actually describes and gives a picture of him being skinned alive by a Roman whip, by a cat of nine tails. And he hung there naked, humiliated, ashamed, shamed completely because of what sin had done to man. Jesus had to become that. 
And he became that for you and he became that for me. And we think that he was um, not an innocent man. We think he was a lunatic. We think he, he might have just been a moral teacher. We think he might have just been a good guy. But I'm telling you, he was God in the flesh. He came as a perfect human being, never sinned. He never, ever, ever, ever sinned. And he came as a perfect lamb, a perfect sacrifice, a perfect remedy from a divine and holy God. He came and he gave himself up for you and he gave himself up for me. Because the wages of sin is death. Death, separation away from God, eternal life or an eternal existence in hell. A place where there's no water, where there's no satisfaction, where there's no hope. All these people have been talking about hope and there's no hope in hell, but there is hope in the name of Jesus Christ. He is living hope. He is present, the presence of hope. He is hope in a body, hope in a God. And I want to tell you today that you have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. Jesus said, unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And I want to tell you that you can enter the kingdom of God today by believing in the one and only son, by being set free from your sin, the thing you could not escape. Jesus said, he who sins is a slave of sin. We have become slaves, but Jesus came to completely set us free. This Bible tells me that he came to set us free. This Bible describes the horrors that he went through. This Bible describes what's on the other side, eternal life, heaven with God an eternal reigning when he comes back his second coming as the glorious king we're going to reign with him in glory free from affliction free from hopelessness free from depression free from sickness all of those things evaporate they run away they flee from the presence of a pure god and if you need any of those things today i want to tell you that the answer is jesus christ I want to tell you that he can set you free just like he set me free eight years ago. I'm free from everything. Free from all addictions, free from all lustful thoughts, free from desires that would destroy me. They don't even come up anymore. He set me free because he's the one I want. He's the God that set me free. And so I want to give you an opportunity right now to pray with me. If you want to shut your eyes and repeat after me, what we're going to do is we're going to say a prayer. It's not the prayer that saves you. Jesus Christ is the saviour. He's the one who saves but it's about opening up your heart in surrender, crying out to a loving God, a holy God, asking him to forgive you of all of your sins, all of the things you've done wrong, breaking God's law, living a life separate from him. And it's asking him to come in and set you free from all those things, to wash you in that precious blood that bought you and paid for you to be free, that body that was broken for you to be healed. So let's pray right now as you repent. Jesus said to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It means to turn, to think a different way, to think about this differently and believe God, believe and trust him that he is the one who can save you. So as you shut your eyes with me, why don't you pray this after me? Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I repent of my wicked way. I surrender my life to you. I give it over. I believe, Jesus, that you died and that you rose again. I believe I need you as my saviour. I ask that your blood would cleanse me. I accept your cleansing flow. And Jesus, I submit to you as my Lord. I respond to your sacrifice and your call. And I give you my all. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you simply surrendered your life to Jesus today. These scriptures are going to reveal the rest of your life, the truth about who you are. There's a comment section. There's a place down where you can click on. You can find out, send a comment, ask where you need to be connected. If there's a church near you or a community online, you can search for them. They can help you find a Bible-based group, people who believe in Jesus, they believe that he died and rose again and that he is the king, that you are completely set free from sin and you can live as in righteousness, in holiness, empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. I want to encourage you today that you have become a, ch- a child of God. You've believed in the only, only one and only Son, the name of Jesus Christ, and he is the Saviour, he is the Lord, and he has saved you today. 
And so I want to bless you. I speak a blessing of freedom and hope over you, just like everyone else. God bless you, and thanks for listening.